oh dear god, what am I doing? Uh, so this is probably going to surprise quite a few of you. Um, mostly because A, I don't have a playgroup, and B, I've been playing mostly one-on-one -on -one formats, and specifically modern, on this channel since its inception. But recently, I've been playing a little bit more Commander, because my local LGS went from having Modern on Monday night to having Commander on Monday. And what you see before you is the deck that I play in paper that I made. And that's truly why this video exists. I play a lot of maps. I play a lot of decks, but very few of them have I come up with from the ground up. Decks that I can actually say that I would was the one who came up with the idea, or not the idea per se, but actually the cards in them and not just picking and choosing 90% of the deck online or from some player that's much better at magic than me, is one popper deck that I haven't recorded on the channel yet because it's not that good. And this, this is my Cabal EDH deck. And why Cabal? Well, essentially I have a couple of pre-cons. I bought them because I thought they were cool, because I thought some of the cards would be useful in Legacy, or just to have an EDH deck kicking around for when my friends who were a lot more into EDH than I was wanted to have a game. And it wasn't until I moved to Australia where I thought, hey, let me actually take a proper stab at this. And the Cabal deck essentially was me looking at my binders, which are down here, which is I'm looking there, <laughs> and saying, what's a card I never really got to play with? And Cabal is just that. He, he's a safety valve card. Uh, and in one-on-one, -on -one, he's good against things like Storm, Control, anything that's really, you know, instance and sorcery heavy in those kind of one-on-one -on -one games. Now, he does say any non-creature spell. So of course, things like enchantments and artifacts and planeswalkers and now battles are still going to get tagged by him. But mostly in the one-on-one -on -one games, it was instances and sorceries. And Cabal is one of those cards that was always on the cusp of being playable. He saw a little sideboard play in Eldra Axes, as that was an Orzhov deck. But by the by, he really didn't see a lot of play, and I have every version of this guy. I have non-foil versions, I have pre-release versions. It's a mix of thinking he was cool and also playing a lot during Kaladesh. I just kind of naturally got them. I don't think I actually went out of my way any. And the rest of this pile you see here was cards I already owned. They were cards I owned for one reason or another that were just sitting in a trade binder, not being used for anything. Again, because this is a paper deck, there were cards that just don't get played in one-on-one -on -one formats, unironically or on, you know, with an idea of doing something very cute. So I threw this together and I was just kind of enjoying myself. But like I said, I don't have a play group. I don't have a group of people I play with online who's also into EDH. So what am I doing here? Well, I'm doing an experiment. And uh, for those of you who are still watching the video, you guys are going to come along with me. I am going to take this deck into just the general pool of EDH players on MitGo. And we're going to see if it does any good when my admittingly even limited ability to do any sort of politicking comes into play. So I'm literally just going to go to the page, find a match, and see how it does in a pool of randos. Mostly because I've been enjoying playing this deck, and also, fun fact, even this deck in paper only has one victory to its name as boarding. It's a pile deck. But before we jump into the game, why don't I tell you what this deck is even trying to do? EDH decks, if you don't play a lot of multiplayer magic, have a couple of things specific to them. Now, I'm sure anyone watching this video is familiar with EDH, but if somehow I am the first person introducing you to it. Wow, welcome. Uh, but also, it's a singleton format. You can only have one of each card. You have a single legendary creature as your commander that you can cast multiple times from essentially the command zone or a fancy exile. Each time you cast a commander, you have to pay two more for each time you've already tried to cast it. The singleton nature of EDH means your deck has a couple different plans. It normally has a main plan, in which case this is the safety valve. It's trying to stop people from doing really degenerate things, which is honestly why I think it might be okay on Magic Online because a lot of people are probably trying to combo off since it's not as much politicking as there would be in a regular game of EDH, you know, in paper. But also it has a life gain sort of sub theme, you know, so it has things like Beladar Sovereign, which is just if you have a high life total, you win the game, as well as Test of Endurance, same idea. It also has just a whole bunch of ways to gain life and to drain people for doings. Uh, I don't think I'm going to give it a much better <laughs> introduction than that. So let's try and jump into a game and see if this is ever going to see the light of day, because again, I don't know if this is going to be entertaining at all, but let's find out together. Join me, won't you? All right, so I'm in the lobby waiting for start, and I just thought it was funny that a lot of the matches have descriptors to them, you know, CE CEDH, non-CEDH, um, hey yo, welcome, let's have some fun, no CDH, please, uh, the funniest one, which is testing, probably level 7, which I don't know if that's a meme or that's a guy being honest that he tr 
truly believes it's a level seven. Um, from what I understand of my limited knowledge of the EDH scene, everything's a level seven. Uh, but I decided to join one with no description whatsoever. Uh, you do have to wait a bit longer for the games to start. I'm honestly surprised. This is the first time I've gone into the EDH panel in Midgo. Personally, I've seen a lot of people play it online, and I played it in paper, obviously. But I've never played it on Midgo myself, so you guys are going to see me bumble my way through this. But there's no, um, like, beta play option, which is where I thought Midgo kind of had its bread and butter. It's it's very interesting, because, like, people aren't interested in watching, like, practice room games for one-on-one. -on -one. But pretty much, with the exception of one-on-one -on -one Commander, which has a, you know, ticket entry fee, there's no, like, four-player ticket entry fee. Um, probably because I have to assume it's a very casual format, except for the fact that CEDH, which literally stands for Competitive EDH, is right there in the title, and two out of the five games on the screen right now. Six, because math is hard. But it was just very interesting. We'll, we'll cut back when the match actually starts. But so far, this is already fascinating. We're going to see how long it takes for this game to even get going. Because uh, right now, you know, next person who, who gets on Mitko, who itching for an EDH game, have to assume they will too join the mystery game, and we'll see if this is just super quick, somebody combos off turn three, or if this is, you know, an actual long drawn out, Brian then has to edit two hours of footage. Uh, also, fun fact, and there's a little bit behind the scenes of how you make these YouTube videos. Um, my computer likes it when I break up my, my recordings into smaller chunks which there's really no logical moment to do that when playing an EDH game. There's no end of the round. There's no five matches. It's just one big chunk. So we're going to see how long this is going to take to edit. Because, uh, boy, howdy, is this have the possibility of dragging hours. Uh, and who knows, maybe it'll be a fun dragging for hours. But I have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of my... EDH comes from the people I play with, uh, but again, I'm, I'm here for the experiment. Catch you guys in a moment. All right, we are starting. Oh, man. Uh, normally, I get rid of this, but I feel like that's going to be important for a game like this. All right, so we have before us a whole bunch of people. What, what command? Embercool, Shrines. That's Shrine one, right? Yeah. And Rurik Thar. <laughs> Uh, oh, we have a Sarah Ascendant turn one, though, so we'll keep. Uh, who's even going first? We all rolled one except for one guy, Big Caveman, which is over there. So I should be going second, which is nice. Uh, people taking their free mulls. I have a feeling I'm in a very strong room. Eric Thar is not a uh, friendly guy, shall we say? But hey, we have turn one, Sarah Ascendant, into turn two, Selfless Spirit, to try and protect, and then turn three, put Swift Fruit Boots on Sarah Ascendant, which is generally not the theme of this but Sarah sent it is a very good EDH card all right what they got nothing they just uh roll through the turn and there I have no idea how to set up my stops if I'm being honest all right well time to time to make friends with our Sarah ascendant and we're done <laughs> That's our turn, everybody. How are you guys enjoying your turn one of uh, EDH? Hunter's Enclave and Expedition Map, sure. I mean, here's the thing. Whoever I hit is going to be real sad. Mana Crypt, oh man. Everyone's, oh, okay, that's a, the third guy. Everyone is, is going so fast. It's a soul ring. <laughs> Oh man, this is amazing. You know, certainly certainly makes the Sarah Ascendant look kind of piddly when guy across the table goes Mana Crypt Soul Ring. Chromatic Lantern. Okay, so a hilarious amount of ramp. Oof. Okay, so I have the strangest feeling I know who I'm going to hit, which is Grom Hellscream. <laughs> I do think I try and protect the Sarah Ascendant with a selfless spirit though. Like unless we happen to draw a soul ring, which would help. Elf dude. Should come back around to us. I mean, at least we had a very very strong start so it feels like uh you know <laughs> we're, we're keeping up with these guys who very much have like the right person that's new uh it feels like a lot stronger decks than us but maybe that's just the nature of playing on go you know because the cards are a lot cheaper here so maybe that's just a uh, standard thing and now protector guy selfless spirit and we pass we really can't yield anymore though in case they try and kill the sarah ascendant but next turn unless we unless something vastly changes i think we just swift food boots the sarah ascendant and continue trying our incredibly fair deck versus whew, these uh scary looking people we sat down at the table with thing all right our opponent has a creature that lowers their enchantment costs and they're playing shrines i mean i feel like getting down cabal is really going to do a number on the guy we've already slammed but i also think our sarah ascendant is like how we stay in this game here comes shrine boy i mean we have a lot of ways of, of ruining shrine guys dead he did ramp super uh, i feel like i'm just gonna keep hitting shrine guy. <laughs> 
<laughs> I feel like maybe playing Cabal might be the right thing because everyone else is trying to ramp. The Rurik Thar guy doesn't have any red mana, right? Also, I, I am a dirty combo player and there is a combo in the Cabal deck. It is not Sanguine Bond, Exquisite Blood, by the way, because I don't own uh, Exquisite Blood. I own, I own Sanguine Bond. It's really right here on my desk. Huh? I didn't bother putting it in my paper version because, you know, I, I don't have Exquisite Blood, but maybe that's super duper wrong. Then again, I'm awful at Magic in general and EDH is no exception. Triple it, right. sure. The strangest feeling playing Combal might be smarter than just trying to go all in on Sarah's Ascendant all of a sudden. I have a Cleansing Nova if I really get worried. And I also have, you know, the Selfless Spirit on the board to protect my stuff and kill all of theirs. Godless Shrine, don't need to do that quite yet. Black, white, white, play the commander. Now we're also going to learn if I'm able to put that in the right spot. Oh, the guy who's kind of going off with shrines, we'll just keep uh, reminding him what flying is. I mean, the Emrakul player just like taking a turn is super duper scary. Rurik Thar in general is super scary and hurts a ton. Then again, we're also punishing people for playing non-creature spells. Unwinding Clock, yep. We'll take a little bit of damage, thank you. Uh, by the way, I might not zoom in on the cards uh, as much as people might hope for when you're seeing EDH getting played. This is me just trying to figure this out. And again, if uh, all 14 people watch this, we won't do it again. But hey, I'm having fun, are you? So they're going to loot a million. Oh no, you just straight up draw a card for each one they control. Because it's like one of the original runs. And so they drew four cards. That's sweet. I mean, it, it might just lead nicely into, you know, trying to wrath and then selfless spirit protect our stuff. Because if this guy is just going off this way, I mean, we've we've done a lot to hit him. Poco Thief of Crowns. Oh dear. Well, I'm pretty sure Pumball is super duper dead now. Or maybe just the Sarah Ascendant. Yeah, okay. So our Sarah Ascendant is no longer scary. We really didn't have any way of stopping that. I mean, we have a generous gift to just kill Oko. This is what I, I mean by this is the safety deck, safety valve deck. Uh, we're trying to police the everyone a little bit, which is hard to do without being straight up stacks. But also he is at 16 and Kambal does, you know, take a chunk out of him every time he plays a non-creature spell, which seems to be the majority of his deck, if we're being honest. Yep, more... More shrines and spirits. Are these enchantments? They are enchantments. Okay. We can even cleansing Nova and just kill artifacts and enchantments, but that's going to be turn five, which might be too slow for this. Where's this guy going? Going over to guy with no blockers. That's coming at me. I do not care. I mean, I realize it's commander damage, but I don't think the shrine player is going to kill me with cash. Also, I'm at 56, so. All right, doesn't have the mana to pay that. Doesn't look like. Rurik Thar's back up in one, two, three, four, five. So they can't quite cast Rurik Thar, but I'm sure whatever they're going to cast now, I'm not going to like. And a war vision. That's fine. Why'd they tap so many green mana? I feel like they could have tapped the mountain and not have to left their creature down, but you know, you do you. All right, comes into play. They get to draw a card. It's also a 3-3 three, three now. So is is big. That's the red mana for. Or are they just passing? Looks like they're just going to pass. All right, we draw a mind stone. Means we kind of get to do it. So we play godless shrine and then we gener we play mind stone, then we generous gift, which is fine by us because it guarantees a cleansing nova next turn, which feels like it's important. Feels like it's something we should do. So we're going to kill Oko now. Uh, they unwinding clocked, so they had to tap again. That, then that, that, and goodbye, Oko. Please leave. All right, they have an elephant now. Uh, and we're just going to stay on D at this point, you know. Next turn, we have Cleansing Nova, which is going to just wipe the board clean of things I'm worried about. But they're they're going to draw so many cards that, who knows, they might even have an answer for it. But we're sitting at a, at a comfy 51 life, and Oko is now no longer on the, on the field. I'm very happy that Oko's gone. Expedition map. The old uh, Emrakul player here. They find an Eye of Ugin. So I have to imagine an Eldrazi deck is pretty brutal. There's a lot of Eldrazi that are colorless that could really ruin days. I don't know if this Emrakul is better than Kozilek as a commander, but honestly, I've... Oh, the Emrakul player scoops it up. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, generally, I find that... Yeah, uh, other guys like Han too. Yes, he figured... He was not going to win. All right, so we've already gotten third. <laughs> Um, that's kind of annoying because I, I really did need other players to kind of kind of take some of the heat off of me. Because once I Trespassers Curse and blow up most of our opponent's stuff, like they're going to keep the Elephant Token that I give them, but also trade the Elephant Token for Sarah's Ascendant. Rari's Wake, sure. All going to blow up unless they kill me. I don't think they're going to kill me. They could have like Force of Will though because they're a five color deck and clearly budget is not a thing that's going on over there. And that's the thing, it, it shouldn't. And here's, here's the theory of mine 
kind of EDH. EDH is a very popular format right now, A, because it's multiplayer and it's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a very competitive format, and most people who play Magic don't play it competitively. But even beyond that, you can go out and you can just buy a deck. You can't go out and buy a standard deck. It's a challenger decks, which are designed to have no shelf life. You can't go out and buy a modern or a legacy deck. But you can go out and buy an EDH deck, and the EDH decks are relatively powerful as opposed to challenger decks where it's one of those you have to be there, you have to be in the moment for it to work. So that's the thing there with EDH, like stores can have a backlog of ready to go decks. Sphere of safety. Um, so the blowout gets bigger and bigger. I don't think we're going to be able to kill them because of the elephant token, but I also think having Cabal and having our opponent get drained over and over and over again is just the correct move. Now, not entirely sure how we're gonna stop a Rurik Thar, because I do think we just blow up all enchantments and artifacts rather than creatures. And I feel like Rurik Thar is gonna come down. And then we have a scary Rurik Thar. Yep, no, you can attack me for four. Also attacking with the three, three. Well, we're just gonna take it. Again, we're 57. None of this matters. We don't have any of our you win the games if you're over X life sort of thing. I don't think that's how we're winning this game. Uh, not entirely sure how we're winning this game because again, we're not really politicking. You know, me and Big Caveman over there, good old Rurik Thar. It's not like we're, we're looking at this guy as the arch nemesis. Um, I don't think because he's, he hasn't really done anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's sending the, the enchantment at the other guy. I mean, I don't see why Big Caveman would block. Again, they're at 40 and, you know, it's a 3-3. It's a three, three. It doesn't do anything. They they need their creature to cast for Thar, right? Because it's one three three four one two. Yeah, no. So 0% chance they block. Um, In fact, I probably would have thrown my commander at Big Caveman as well. But maybe they're worried about dying on the crackback. Then again, 3, 5, 7. We're going to put them to 2 because I don't think they're going to cast any other anything else. I really hope Big Caveman doesn't scoop. Then again, we're going to learn something about playing with Stranger online and this is might end up being a much shorter video than i intended if uh you know you play your one edh game and one guy scoop salts and just just doesn't doesn't bother timing out and maybe this other guy is going to time out i don't see why he would time out though like it's not that bad i mean then again he doesn't know what's in my hand but who who knows because we like at the end of this they're going to have an elephant they're going to have a three three elephant and three lands and everything else is going to explode if they don't have a force of will if they have a force of will we die. Uh, the guy who's clearly going on is is questioning. Yeah. Perhaps salting off. See, and that's a problem. If we were playing even over Discord at this point, I think what we could do is just talk and be like, hey, just survive. It'll be fine. I would maybe see if I could get them not to cast Rurik Thar because then I'm going to get domed for a million. But yeah, that's the thing. Huh. Again, this is very interesting because... And, and I kind of understand now why perhaps EDH wasn't the biggest thing in Arena to worry about. It really does take away from the experience if you don't have the person across the table from you doing EDH. Whereas, like a one-on-one -on -one game, I'll have fun talking to myself. <laughs> I'll talk to myself the whole time. You guys have seen me do almost 100 videos of me talking to myself. But yeah, this is interesting. Oh, did he come back? Yeah, no, the guy just scooped. What a what an interesting scenario. Now he's not going to see my... Uh, it's like game. Wait for it. All right. If he has a force, then it's game. He doesn't have a force. This is hilarious. Destroy all artifacts and enchantments. <laughs> That makes the whole thing worth it. <laughs> oh man, that was great. That was amazing. Oh. <laughs> it took 20 minutes. It took 20 minutes and I won. Uh, I'll give it to the only guy who, who stuck around. Uh, oh, that was so much fun. Oh my God, that was amazing. <laughs> Okay, let's 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 go back to the deck real quick. That was amazing. What, what was that? Ah, oh, that was amazing. That felt so good. I I didn't expect the game to be done in 20 minutes, and I didn't expect to win. But you have two guys salt scooping, and you just you just have it when you have it. That's amazing. Um, it's it's like an anti CDH deck. I didn't expect to do two games in this video, but I I, I don't know. Let's try one more maybe. I, I am flabbergasted. Let, let's go again. All right, game two. I'm kind of amazed. Uh, what's going on here this time? Commander, false god, commander. Don't know who that is. And commander, partners. All right. Oh no, it's a criminal past and a thing. Um, my, this hand isn't great. 
I don't think we can keep this. If we had black mana, we could, but I don't. Q guide, I heard he infinite turns. Isn't he the guy who made the thing? Just my timer. Ah, uh, mulligan. This seems better. Keep. All right, apparently there are players that are known in the online EDH space. This is wild. What's interesting is like when I play EDH in paper, it can go on for, you know, any amount of time, but it seems like these are over pretty quickly, which is surprising and delightful. I am off to Turkey on vacation next Thursday. Oot woo. Do these guys know each other or is this just a thing that happens? And our opponent doing some cracking. See what they get down. Oh, Badlands. So I even own the right dual land for this deck and paper, but it goes in a different deck and I'm too lazy to move it. And I literally just, you know, brought this deck out as it's played, you know, one for one. Rexian Vindicator. Well, that might get hard to cast. So we'll yield. Got nothing going on here. Why did my land untap? And Mitko do the weirdest things. I mean, Thalia is a no fun card. I mean, I'm, I'll enjoy myself. We have Selfless Spirit into Thalia. If we get the fourth thing, we can Smothering Tide and then possibly get down Vindicator. I mean, it's not as strong as last game where I had, you know, turn one Sarah Ascendant and then just beat up my opponent to the point of actually winning, which was impressive. But, you know, sometimes it, it just is what it is. We have the Eye Tyrant for Ultist of Tiamat. Like Burning Shoals over and over again. Background is another Burning Shoal. <laughs> Which is which is scary. No reason to help anybody with mana. We'll just do it this way. And here's my selfless spirit. Rar. I have a blocker. Healed through the turn at this point. You can definitely tell that Mitko was not designed for this because it's it's acting a little clunky. And I'm sure I'm not saying anything to anybody who's played a lot of EDH online. Right now, though, I don't know who my biggest threat is. Like, I'm sure the Thalia is gonna really annoy the table. And I actually kind of hope that. Oh well, if we find one more white land, the Urbor can actually turn into white mana because of Fetid Heat. Then we might be able to get down a turn four Vindicator, which fun. I mean, I love Phyrexian Vindicator. Not a great card, but it's uh, sure interesting. Gotta be Ruins, sure. Sword of Vengeance. What even do? Oh, it just Rama's Angel of Vengeance, what it does. All right, we have the Levon player. Urza Saga. Might want to hit you. <laughs> I might want to hit you very hard, but there's no basic land. So rather than play my commander, I might just play out the Thalia. It seems like it'll ruin everyone's day. And that's what I'm here. For. Oh, they got their commander out. Well, Thalia can still block that. D spark. All right. Well, that's something for later. One, two, three. And here comes Thalia. We have one more turn to draw a white land. In the meantime, though, I'm just going to send this at this guy. Oak, just take a nibble. Get first blood and all that. You know, remember, folks, EDH games have to end eventually, so might be good just to, you know, help the game along a bit. No way they make this mistake, right? You just put it in. Yep, you just put it in tapped. So we have slowed down the table a bit, which feels nice. Commander out so I can cast him if I whiff on lands. Uh, this is a very four drop heavy hand, actually, now that I look at it. Persistent Partitioners. Oh, it's that kind of. Ah, it comes into play tapped. That's great. That's great. All right, Thalia doing a lot of work this game. We have the self spirit to keep Thalia alive as well. And even beyond that, you know, it has first strike, which is nice. Oh, whatever this is, I'm sure I'm not going to like it. Is it just the background? Primal Amulet allows you to cast stuff and then eventually lets you copy stuff, I believe. Yeah, it looks like there's spells slinging over there. I doubt they're going to be silly enough to send the guy my way. Fusion just attacked with Shuffle Drazi. I'm not sure what they're going on about, if I'm being honest. Maybe someone can help me with that. Arcane Signet. Okay, so we're not, we're not going to get our thing down. Just play Combo. Maybe that That'll slow stuff down. I'm going to continue to poke the uh, the mill player. I feel like the mill can just absolutely wreck us. Whereas this guy, his main form of attack can't get past Thalia right now. Plus he's spell slinging and Cabal can take out spell slinging. Turdy or back teaming. Plus this person seems to be knocked off their game at the moment. So Herc Mandry too good. There's a lot of talk going on that I don't understand. Oh, okay. It's the commander. What does he even do? You can give your upkeep. X works in four. Whenever you gain life things. Oh, great. Well, we really, really need, um, Cabal to, uh, <laughs> or to, to draw so we can play the Vindicator and, and hopefully put that in front of stuff. But if we go a whole cycle where Cabal doesn't do anything, then clearly we should have just played the Arcane Signet and held up D-Spark for something scary. I guess next turn we could just Arcane Signet and D-Spark if we don't draw anything better. He's just a simple advisor. Uh, sure. Read the bones. Well, that's gonna cost you four life, not two. Oh man, there's so many things going on now. Dual Caster Mage. Wow, they are really going in. Although I don't think Cabal activates on Poppy. 
these. Nah, clearly not. So really, really digging deep on that one. Thankfully, Thalia continues to have First Strike, and we have Selfless Spirit to also give it Indestructible if they try and remove it. I feel like this game might actually take the amount of time I want it to. Just uh, other stuff coming into play tapped. Where are you going to swing with that big old dude? This doesn't have first. No, it doesn't have hand or anything. Up, oh, just continuing to go after the guy who's open. We get our turn again. Okay, so... Back to plan A, play Arcane Signet, and leave up D-Spark. What does this do? At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life for X is the number of cards in your hand minus four. Whenever you gain life, tap three and tap advisors and monks draw a card. Um, let's just continue to not have friends. I don't want you gaining life. Get I am I am here to make friends and continually poke the guy. <laughs> poke. Next turn, we have a Phyrexian Vindicator, which should help us out a bit. Looks like uh, the False God player is finally going to get to play a spell. Bringer of Days. Bringer of Red and Dawn. Any of your up, you may untap target creature and gain control of it again. Okay, well, they're going to start stealing stuff, which is fun. So I guess they have sack outlets and they just start taking stuff, which is neat. Drawing a Wrath would be nice right about. <laughs> I guess that is an advisor. I guess that is that is one way to get more advisors. I, I, I love it. All right, so let's see See how many spells they want to play into Cumball. Dark Confidant, no fear. Tap Dark Confidant, because all you does work. Wheel of Fortune. Hmm. Suddenly, my plan does not look as good. Because I feel like I'm about to lose all of my best cards that are in my hand, and we're going to get lands instead. Or no lands. Or no lands in the top. Seven cards. Uh, a gu, a D. What do people lose? Fairy's protection, a whole bunch of stuff. I don't have anything in graveyard. We just continue to drain them, though. It somehow play Felidar Sovereign. That'd be cool. But again, no lands. No lands, no chance. If he, just, if he ta just takes out that guy, that'd be great. That would be ideal. If he just keeps casting things into Cabal, that'd be even better. He didn't find a Wrath, though, which is unfortunate. Oh, it's a 10-6 now, though. He can take a swipe at me. We can Selfless Spirit, though. Ooh, we also have Flawless Maneuver. So we don't even have to give up on Selfless Spirit. I wouldn't be surprised if this comes at me, considering that my Cabal is really ruining his day. Oh, no. They're just gonna take out that player. So that's a problem I don't have to deal with anymore. We should really draw some lands. <laughs> That was, that would be great. That would be amazing. Dark Ritual. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, the so four plus two is six. Felidar Sovereign is six, right? <laughs> right, guys? That's four, and this would be five, six. All right. <laughs> let's, let's see what their plan is. I'm at 48. I have two things that give me indestructible to my creatures. I'm waiting for the salt. I don't think people would appreciate what I just did. Because pretty much the only thing that stops the Felidar right now is an exile spell. Uh-huh. Trample, so that's good. I reckon they just swing at me, right? Yep, that's what I thought. We go to blocks. We risk it. Held our sovereign with the block. And we get priority again. Lawless. Keeping our blocker up. Now if they have a counter spell. Oh, no, we have indestructible. Means we gain even more life. We're at 52. My creature's indestructible. Whew, my heart is pounding. This is fun. How do you deal me 12 damage, opponent? Okay, this is fine. Continuing to gain life. They're gonna have to get rid of Felidar Sovereign somehow. If they have, um, what'd you call it? If they have, uh... Toxic Deluge, then they can get rid of Felidar and we're we're up a creek. Exile target creature. Yeah, no, that's gonna do it. That is gonna do it. We have no way of stopping that, right? Cause indestructible. Well, I tried. Okay, so they had they had an answer. We now only have one source of uh, colored mana. Losing our haha, -ha, I win card. Wonder why that exiles actually. That seems like a very destroy thing. But I guess exile is just ultimately infinitely better. Chaos warp, their own thing. Okay, sure. Keep dealing yourself damage, opponent. Oh, they get a second chaos warp. Probably chaos warp one of my guys. It's got to be the Thalia, right? Chaos warping the same thing twice. Chaos warping combo. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, again, if I had a way to stop that, I would. Ooh, but I got a land actually helps oh but it's not a basic land so cabal's not gonna come back I do have a plowshare, though, and I have a, a draw with uh, Mind Stone. I mean, this is a trick. We know it's a trick, but, you know, we have we have nothing else going on. Oh, okay. All your first strike, just a ching keeping me afloat. If we could draw either color source, we do have a decent number of basics in the O Stone. That's unfortunate. <laughs> okay, if we can find colored mana, that'd be ideal. Nope, that is decidedly not colored mana. So Cursed Totem doesn't really do anything. So we're, we're essentially going to pay three mana draw card. Man Tower. No, nope, that doesn't do it. Um, 
Hmm. Well, the selfless spirit might as well attack. We have a plowshare to stop any sort of other nonsense, but that's literally the only spell we can cast right now. In fact, we can play Cursed Totem. Uh, no, that doesn't help because then selfless spirit can't act. So, just, uh, oak our opponent. I mean, perhaps we won't make it to the final two here, uh, especially if we only have one colored source, but I'm hoping, uh, hoping we can find one. We do have quite a few. I think it's like 10 and 10 and 4, something like that. 14% of the deck are basic lands. We already have an arcane signet, so we're not completely out of the game. Spell book, sure. Now that come balls off the field, they might just go off with a whole bunch of random spells. They still gotta attack me. Really hope they don't. Let me just... Why? <laughs> Three... I can't play the game at the moment. Seems odd to go after... So seems odd. You know what? It's life. It's fine. So kill the guy who can still cast spells? Well, maybe his Dark Confident will just kill him. What did he reveal? Collecting SWAT. You still have Signet. And old mate has his... his whole deck. Again, who do you just seems... Odd. Yeah, I don't know about that. But then again, I'm the guy who's actively losing out on it. So hard to say. Yeah, just looking to, to trade that in. That's let's block the zombie. Really matter. Take a life. Deflecting SWAT can just change anything to anything, right? Yeah. So now our swords to plowshare doesn't even do what we want. and just change where it goes. All right. Either source or signet or talisman seems fine to me. Oh, stone. Just got to blow everything up, eh? I'll, I'll save Thalia. I don't know if he can deflecting SWAT that, but it was going to die anyway. <laughs> All right. So... He gets to draw his card and lose his life. I still think I just hit. This can activate Cave of the Hive Tyrant and Blood. I do think we're going to crack Silent Clearing. Obnixilis, sure. I have to discard a card, probably Viscopa Guild Mage. Each opponent loses life unless they discard a card. Into I'll just lose two life? He doesn't do anything else. So yeah. Quark the Thumbless. Like a flippy thing? Uh, but he comes in tapped anyway, so I get to poke Obnixilis. Well, let's take a bite. Draw a card. Esper Sentinel, that'll do. Baron Moore. Well, that's less worrisome. All right. Play a Command Tower. Let's just get as much out as we can. So if we play this first. So Hound is just essentially a vigilant blocker. Then we have Esper Sentinel doing their best Esper Sentinel stuff. Maybe we could just ignore the Obnixilis and just poke the guy, maybe? It can create some, it can act the guy. We can also cycle Baron more if we have nothing better to do. What is this? Flash tap creatures you can all my block as if they were on Oh yeah, sure. Next turn, probably get Kambal back down and that'll just stop this guy from doing anything. And then it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, which who knows? Might be cool, might not be. Don't know what this is. I'd just be the commander. Yeah, sure. Although we're probably just gonna swords to plowshare that, if I'm being completely honest. Area of land. Yeah, sure. You gotta let me draw a card? Didn't think so. Well, I guess we can hold up swords to see if anything important happens. Otherwise, we're definitely just going to plow our opponent's uh, commander because they really seem to want to have an unlimited hand size. Oh, going at the Omnixilis, which is nice. I mean, personally, I think I would have just put the guy to seven. Hope that I had the ability to take them out. But again, I don't think like a command player. Why does my commander keep closing? Somebody tell me like why Midco does have this stuff it does when we're trying to play a commander game. This is this is wild. But essentially, they have an untapped Quark the Thumbless. Uh, I will continue just to lose two life. Thank you. I think that's for the best. Fiery Negotiator, sure. Do they pay the one is the question. They don't. We get to draw a swamp, which might be very important next turn. Who knows? Monk token, it's tapped. I don't think they'll be swinging anywhere. I guess he really is on your side. Not doing anything. So let's try and plow this guy. Our opponent might want to kill one of our things, but at this point, I don't see why they would want to do. They don't have their commander out. Man, land. Opponent is probably not seeing the man land that they need the man. Question is, do they cash in their deflecting SWAT now and not have the man land? Or do they just let me get rid of something that's also kind of a problem for them? Looks like they are going to cash in the deflecting SWAT and probably get rid of Thalia. Oh no, they're just going to let it go. That works for me. Another snow-covered swamp, eh? Hmm. I think our best bet is this Copa Guild Mage swing. Because they can turn Cave the High Tyrant on, but then we can deal six damage anyway, put him to three. That's about the best we're going to get done here, I think. Try and kill the player. Try and kill the player. Yeah, here comes Cave of the Iron Tyrant, which is fine. Thing is, my Hound has Venice, so they're just throwing it in front of Thalia, essentially. As Minace. Click, click, click. Oh no, they're going to use Quark. I suppose it's also allowed. <laughs> 
I I suppose. Uh, no, we definitely want to kill the the Eye Tyrant. We turn on Copa Guild Mage, which is why we didn't play Cursed Totem. I guess technically we didn't have to attack our opponent. We could have attacked that guy and killed him, so we missed lethal there. I guess we can do that next turn. Because if we had just attacked this player, then given Thalia an attack, but then Thalia would be dead. Yep, one's going to draw a lot of cards. It seems like this is going to be another one of those games where if we draw Wrath, we'll be okay, and if we don't draw Wrath, then uh, we're going to be pretty sad, and this guy is going to just absolutely dumpster us. I have a god. That's a thing. Coming in at us. Sure. I don't I don't think I care. Yeah, I don't I don't think I care. We're at 51. All right. This guy is probably going to have a big turn because they've got their planeswalkers going. Our opponent does actually have the ability to replay their computer fresh out of spot removal. You know, this guy is just teetering on a prayer here. But also this player just has no interest in taking this one out, I assume, because I think they need to take down my 51 life, which reminder to general players. Uh, yeah, I would think so, too. Our opponent said they actually think they had a better chance of winning without O-Stone, uh, which I also would have thought, too, because I wouldn't have been able to play any cards. I would have been, you know, fresh out of luck. Uh, I learned that the way you... <laughs> survive EDH games, you just don't talk during people's combat step. Uh, you know, let other people do the talking. Ooh, Coveted Gem. They get to draw a whole bunch of cards. The thing is, though, we are out of, uh, we're out of gas. It just draws cards, right? Do I get to draw a card is the question, or do they absolutely need all of their mana to do whatever they're doing? Oh, I get to draw a card. It's another land, however. These are all the lands we didn't draw when we wheeled. <laughs> get to draw three cards. Use, destroy all artifacts. Like, we would even lose S% all while destroying all artifacts and enchantments to get rid of their nonsense that's going on here I think would be best. Not sure Kane's different unless you draw. What are you doing with this big, big push here? Evish Zot. Okay. Our opponent's already calling good game. Is there something I don't see here? Creates two tap tokens. That's fine. It's two life. I don't see. Yep. I suppose they just swing out at me out of spite, which, you know, I get. Swinging out at the other guy was though. Oh, it just doesn't swing out at anyone. All right. Well, cycle this. Undo inversion. That might be necessary later. Vindicate. Well, again, things to worry about later. So, one of these. Then... Swing at our opponent. Yeah, that guy. Doesn't matter if he blocks or not. All right, doesn't seem to want to, which is fine. Those, one of those. I guess that. Target creature gains lifelink. Those, one of those, and that. And gain life. I don't know if we can actually beat our opponent, but we have an undo inversion to clear the field if they just kind of go off. We also have a vindicate. So I don't know if they can do everything in one turn, but we can try our best to uh, try and just overwhelm our opponent here. Because if they spend their whole turn just casting their commander again, we have vindicate. I mean, it really looks like they're just going to to recast their commander. Yep, this is fine. We just try and vindicate the commander and swing with our Thalia again. Get to draw a card. They do draw a card. Ooh, Mox Amber. That's neat. So free land, one of those. Black, white, colorless. Vindicate our opponent's commander. Uh, the thing is, we really only have one move, which is attack with the Thalia and double ability it again. All right, so black, white, anything. Give it lifelink. Black, black, white. Do the other thing. Chonk them for six. They're at 13. The problem is we've run out of ways to kill their commander without wiping our board as well, and our board is kind of what has been keeping us alive. I feel like they just cast their commander again. Wedding ring. Oh, well, that kind of stops lifelink thing. Now we have a wedding ring. What's our plan now? <laughs> Other than just Thalia beats. All right, and we draw. Oh, they're doing something. This is probably bad. Gaining life, sure. They're just going to gain six life and draw two cards. We really do need to find one of our big, uh, big threats, though. Back to 25. Thanks, Amarat's Archive. The Blood Artist. Wedding ring is really screwing us up here but I don't know if the correct move is to undo inversion. I mean, it would make them have a hand size again. They get to draw a card, Soul Warden. They still doing stuff. Did I yield through my turn? Was I paying that much attention that I completely yield through my turn? Ugh. I think I completely yielded through my turn. That's going to be a shame. But I suppose they're committing more to the undo invert. Nice. All right. Anything we want to do? No. We'll just... right. Our turn now. Whatever they're doing, I don't like it. <laughs> it's an end turn spell. You can have him more talent. Yeah, sure. I mean, we really do need to find one of our big flashy finishes. Stop our opponent. Does that count as gaining life? Or does... Apparently it doesn't. Okay. Doubling does not count as gaining. <laughs> All right. So we, we really do need to find one of our uh, big flashers here. But we'll, we'll blow up a whole bunch of stuff. It's our draw step. We're going into our main. All right. Now we can actually play spells and we should remember to play spells. Let's just get another land out of our deck. Planes. White, white. Actually, I suppose we attack first. We need one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can't do much of anything else. 
So first things first, we just swing out, I believe, dealing as much damage as we can. Fine. Again, if they have a, a force of will, then our plan kind of comes unraveled and this game is probably ending soon. If they don't have it, the wipe should do should do us good. All right, now we undo inversion. White, white, doesn't matter. matter. The ones that don't matter. Yeah, cool, cool. No, you can draw a card if you want. All right, so board's clear. Uh, I have a soul ward. We have quite the task ahead of us. We still have like Archangel of Thune. We still have a combo in our deck. Admittingly, it's a three card combo that's going to take a lot to set up, but we'll uh, we'll go down swinging. We played this long. Then again, our opponent has 15 cards in hand. We have three cards in hand. I have the strangest feeling that, uh, you know, our opponent is going to have a couple more answers than we do. They also have 222 lives, so our ability to win is uh, heavily dependent on a handful of things. Sram sure at least our life gain is our life gain again a random advisor sure. it's interesting that they're playing these random advisors as opposed to more partition uh persistent partitioners Ooh, that one's not uh-huh more advisors if we top deck another wrap i'm gonna be so happy because we still have wrath of god we still have day of judgment like that'd be great take six but we very much need a wrath right now or just Bolas the Citadel. Bolas the Citadel would be great too. Uh, they continue to draw cards. Good for them. Brexian Arena. Well, might be helpful actually, but first things first. I think Cabal comes out first. So white, black, 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 black. It's that one. Oop. We can play both. We can play black, black, anything. Play out the Phyrexian Arena. Try and draw our way out of this. I don't think they have like any activated abilities, but now that our Viscopa Guild Mage is in the bin, neither do we. So we'll just play that out too. All right. I mean, luckily we have a pretty decent life chunk, but I don't see how we do this unless we find a wrath if we find a wrath that's fine i mean we also never we just say no no we can't attack our opponent but we're not winning with attacking at the moment anyway oh it's if we take the plus one plus one counter so i did that wrong we definitely should have taken the plus one plus one counter luckily this is not going to kill combal because combal isn't damage it's loss of life so it's good by me but we're very much in wrath or bust territory here <laughs> finally can't get rid of that finally just have to uh let that one slide Ooh, field of the dead that's not good yeah i think we did a good job getting to the final two here folks um this person like i did harass quite a bit in the beginning of the game i got rid of their commander multiple times but their deck was very resilient uh they also kind of called out the fact that i was somebody they should be dealing with and that seems to have done them well wrath or bust wrath or bust so many advisors i mean advisor tribal it's interesting don't cast me bro i'll cast all i want oh that's one of the guys whose dead is still going off i'm surprised they didn't swing out with more creatures I'm being completely honest. So they get to draw a card. We get to draw a card off of Phyrexian Arena. We really need a Wrath. We really, really need a Wrath. <sighs> They don't have any artifacts or enchantments, um, but we might as well play everything out. Here's Voidwalker. Maybe, maybe that will solve a problem. Who knows? Any of these enchantments other than indestructible one doesn't doesn't look like it. That's a very much a no. Let's play out Blood Artist. Black, black. Those, one of those, and brand of the third pack. Oh, target, target that anyway. Even though we can't be killed, it's just funny. Gain life. We can't even make a mistake with Lauren of the Third Path because we have a, tur a cursed totem out. Also, our Voidwalker also can't do anything because of Cursed Totem, but I mean, it can get in for three damage a turn. It can also block their shadow creatures. Yield because we got nothing. I mean, if they just start swinging out, we're not we're not really going to attack. So put it on Comble. We're not swinging at them. Mm, more Field of the Dead tokens. I mean, again, we're just trying to survive a turn to find a Wrath. And seven life and draws two cards. Yep. They're at a million. They're at a million life. Million, 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 million. Oof. Dude went off. So everything's attacking. So block the big guys. A eh? biggest thing, large thing there. Ball's really not doing anything. So I don't think we're dead. We might be. We might be dead. Math is hard. I think I'm just dead. Cause that's yeah, that's just dead. Give it to the guy who was out super. It's the other tiger, right? There we are. All right, let's draw two cards and see how this would have ended here. Revenge of Ravens, no. Test of Endurance, also no. All right, so that's one win in one uh, second place. Let's go to the wrap up and see what we can talk about. Okay, so we had two very different games there. We had one game where between a mix of salt and luck, we we won, so hooray. And then we had a, a game I was kind of more expecting where we were able to kind of maneuver around. We did get to the final two, uh, but the deck kind of ran out of gas. It didn't have much of its card drawing engine. We didn't see any of like the weird combo stuff. That being said, we almost won. We almost won with Felidar Sovereign because we had our double indestructible protection up, but 
but they had an exile card. And you know what? I, I wasn't upset about it at all. Like, you know, I'm sure people who watch me regularly can tell when I'm a little salty about stuff. But hey, that was fun. Uh, I had fun. We're going to see if you guys had fun. We're going to see if anybody bothered to watch. Uh, if you have any lists you want me to take a look at or perhaps play, email me at heydummyplaythis at gmail.com. That's heydummyplaythis at gmail.com. Heydummyplaythis, not that. Heydummyplaythis at gmail.com. And thanks for coming along. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.